Uh, not that there's been any technical problems or anything, but we're here, and nothing bad has ever happened, ever. If you want to skip introductions on YouTube, haha, Twitch, get fucked, uh, click in the description section below for the link. I'm Arthur Perkins, this is AP Gaming Real, and this is the final episode of Burning Bread. Technically episode four, but really episode three. Technical victories are the only victories that matter, however. Uh, yeah, let's let's do some introductions for this week. Sam, how you doing? I'm okay. Got anything to talk about? Any cat stories? Uh, Any no. blood drinking stories? No. All right, just making sure. <laughs> Had a fairly boring week. Sorry. I'm just waiting for you to admit that you're a vampire on camera. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's talk to Virgil. Virgil, right. how's it going? I mean, she does look like she has those... Uh, curtains pulled real tight. Um, that's true. That's true. Rojo, I was wondering, would you be my Lefo if I became Gaston? Would you be that guy uh, that yeah. goes to the tavern and throws money at people to sing mm -hmm. about me? Mm -hmm. uh, I'd be like throwing out money and the money would have like the chorus written on it so everyone <laughs> could join in. <laughs> You'd make your own coin by hand. Uh, I'm going to remember that. I'm going to remember that. I'm going to use that. Um, I want to comment here real quick. Sam has a belief right now that just says "I believe" with nothing I'm else on it. Thinking, <laughs> I believe something. Uh, she believes that she could think up something for her belief. <laughs> uh, it's a very meta belief. Mm -hmm. I'm not so firm in that belief for myself. What, what do you got going on with you? You just you. Let me ask you. You wrote a song for me. Is this for the intro for Winter's Edge 2? Uh, yeah, well... I it was, was a bit more Asian-y than I thought it would be. I was contacted... Uh, by Lucan. Yeah, by Lucan. And he was like, yeah, I want like an Asian loot kind of thing. Uh, okay. And I was like, this is a, a challenge. Because first of all, in my extensive, extensive libraries... You don't have any sounds. There's not like an Asian loot or like or anything worthwhile uh you know some some like synthesized ones samishan it's like so long so uh don't have any horse drums what you heard was me playing the mandolin wow next level all right mm -hmm. uh other than that i've been doing a bunch of prep because i'm going to start running a DD campaign on the weekends i'm super hyped about that uh gming Tell me more. Tell For me once, more. Uh, I just like gathered up people from, from Reddit because I was having a lot of trouble. And I highly suggest doing that because I got a bunch of replies and you could just easily people see people that were like, I'm, I'm good for number four, play games. Um, or some people are like, oh, well, I've GM'd once, but I played in a couple campaigns and uh, I, I like role playing and I don't like this. And you're like, okay, like someone makes sense. And then you talk to them and you're like, okay, uh, you either will or will not fit in with the group. Hey, um, Virgil, has this group actually met yet? So they've only met in the Skype chat, which okay. we've been talking in a lot. Fucking do. Uh, and one of the players i have played with and that's it there's one thing i know about gathering a new group of I'm, players i'm doing three people who you've never met before one or more of them will simply choose to not show up out of fear it happens every time yeah all right well, i i fine. can prove it to you i have absolute proof go back in my playlists way back deep so when I did the Grand City of Hub campaign, which was my open viewer game, mm. every single week it started late because someone didn't show up. I just don't get it because it was a mess. Like, it was a mess. I was on uh, Night Witches first show uh, I ever did, uh, and yeah, I just you know I just showed up for the show as was agreed upon uh, beforehand, and then you stayed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when they did the show, uh, so I'm hoping people just show up. It seems like everyone's super excited uh, 
Good Everyone's one. written backstories and uh, fairly invested. So, chat is discussing how this show is rapidly becoming like Breaking Bad, and I realize that's true. Like, you now have murdered someone and covered it up and disposed of the body, and you are selling a substance that no one has ever seen before. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they hopefully won't like schedule it as a illegal substance. You just you like hang around street corners. You're like, you want that saw? You want that saw? I can get what you want on it. You want the mushrooms? You want those onions? Dank, dank onions, fresh, cut the same day. First slice is always free. First slice is always free. How did I miss that one? Holy shit, Virgil. Because you're not as good at drug dealing. Yeah, yeah. Guess if you want to beat me at drug dealing, you could do that anytime you want. You got anything else going on? Uh, what else is going on? No, just playing a bunch of music. Um, the stuff that isn't commissioned goes up on soundcloudcom zircon 5 for people's enjoyment. Uh, what was one? I, I recently put one up uh, that I enjoyed a lot. Uh, I'll post it in the chat for you. That's what I'll do. I'll post it in chat. Uh, it really pisses me off. During the break or something. Roll20 and SoundCloud got into a pissing contest, and now we can't play SoundCloud on Roll20. Really I know, but what's the other one? Bad. I actually set up... Didn't they set up a uh, a different site that you could play from? I mean... Yeah, there are some other places, but I... Because someone was like, oh, I can't play your shit anymore, but I could burst? if it was... Yeah, they were like, I could if I was on Fanverse. And I was like, oh, I don't know. And I went to Fanverse and it was like, make an account. And it was like, import all your sounds from SoundCloud. And I was like, yeah, sure. Oh, okay, really? done. All right. We need to talk after this thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, and then that, that's about it. Music and uh, games and trying to find work and just waiting on callbacks. I know that pain, friend. All right, Lauren, let's talk about you. I saw you were uh, laying at a table, and you thought the table looked blank, so you decided you would put a sword in the middle of the table. Yes, what? because I had to pack away all of my leather workshop stuff for the next two weeks. I have just finished checking in for my flight tomorrow to visit family in the UK. So I've been doing a lot of this during the intro, and I'm sorry, but... Check in now. So I did. Uh, does anyone have $1,400 Canadian so I can have business class? Nice. Mm -hmm. I don't have it. So uh, no, no, I say no. I'm not upgrading. And it asked me twice. Uh, how many How many gallons of syrup uh, to the American dollar? <laughs> wow. Um, far, far too many. Far more. I know. Many. I agree because I soak everything in that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I would love a commercial of you doing like a Frank's Red Hot for syrup where you're like, I put that shit on everything. It's a, it's a 30 second commercial and the whole time I'm pouring slowly a whole gallon of syrup onto a plate. <laughs> oh, man. That reminds me of going for wings with some friends on Tuesday. They didn't have versions that were hot, so you could have honey garlic wings, but you couldn't have honey hot wings. So we... So the server. So you pulled the mace out of your <laughs> purse. If I had a mace in my purse, it would be the metal-headed club. Well, I get my bear I mean. mace out and I just no. pepper up by. Well, she brought over a bottle of Frank's Red Hot Sauce, which isn't really that hot, if you ask no, me. Not. But we put it on everything, and that joke was made about six times as we went around. So we put that shit on everything. I mean, it tastes okay. I, so. Yeah, it tastes good. It's just not. You know, it's not, uh, what is it, Dave's and Sanity 357 Magnum or all those other weird varieties, which I'm going to invent a drink that involves hot sauce and vodka. It's be called Russian Meteor, and it's going to be window shattering. I'm not there yet. I tried it yesterday, and uh, no. I don't drink, so I don't have a favorite drink, but I do have a favorite drink to sh suggest to people to try, and that's the cement mixer. Oh, what's that? 
you, you should go try one. Just one or go order one from the uh, bartender and be like, my friend said I should try one of these. <laughs> I'm I am highly skilled at research. I'm not doing that. <laughs> That's a good plan. Um, but if if it's not too too disgusting, I'm it. It it is kind of disgusting, but you should also try it because you're like that was weird. Long Island iced tea, my friends, all day in the sun. Uh, right near the beach. Right near the beach. All right. Boy. I want to I wanna talk to you directly, chat, right now. You're talking about how hard a flight from Canada or the United States to the UK is. Mm, Fuck easy. you, babies. Easy. I flew from Washington, D.C. to Brisbane, Australia. It was the most... You know what? The reverse trip was the most torturous of my entire life. Getting there wasn't... I went during when they had swine flu in Australia, and 16 hours without standing, peeing, pooping, or eating, I showed up, and they thought I had swine flu, because I was like, I'm dying. <laughs> like I'm literally this, dying. The water, food, anything. I ate a Subway sandwich. They didn't have cheddar cheese, and when I asked for cheddar cheese, they looked at me like I was a fucking moron. Apparently, they'd never heard of cheddar before. So I had to get Old English on my Subway sandwich. That's probably good. Was it good? <laughs> no, it was terrible. Um, it was the that's... only cheese whose name I could pronounce. And I had Gatorade, and I felt better, and they let me through customs without detaining me for having pig disease. I did, I did SFO to Sydney. Brutal. Flying back, I had third-degree sunburn from uh, the Great Barrier Reef. I saw it before it got wrecked. And third degree sunburn on a 40 hour flight is excruciatingly painful all across my back. When was this trip? Jeez, eight years ago? Maybe? Uh, I'm pretty sure mine was, was uh, long enough that the, um, what's it called? Pretty sure the statute of limitations has run up. It was so long ago. So yeah, I accidentally had some weed in my pocket the oh, whole time. Oh boy. But then when I found this out later, I was like, holy shit. Like I accidentally smuggled a little bit of weed. And I was like, at least we have a little bit of weed to smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Calm yourself down after. Yeah, I was really stressed out. I've done this a couple times, but I just want to issue another fuck you to both America and Canada at the same time. All six times I have traveled between America and Canada, I have been pulled out for supposedly random screening uh, on both sides of the border. So fuck you, Border Patrol. I don't know why having a beard makes me look like a terrorist, but uh, go fuck yourself. You need to have hockey paraphernalia. Ha! <laughs> there we go. And they'll just sweep you right in. It doesn't Mexico. even help. Mexico, just... I just... Everyone's like, it's so hard to get through the Mexican border. And I'm just like, ba 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 And they're just like, welcome back, Mr. Perkins. And I'm like, thanks, bro! <laughs> You'd think when go you to have, Canada, like, a bunch of... I'm in fucking lockdown. There's, like, nine Canada stamps already on your passport. They're like, I don't know. <laughs> seems suspicious all right let's do this well certainly this intro has been a lot shorter than last night's okeanos intro about oh, really almost a about... third of the length <laughs> we had a very deep discussion about the actual villain of mulan last night mm. where uh i ran my opinion down everyone's throats just like normal previously on burning bread uh, the party got together, decided to finally make a pizza. Then they murdered a guy. No, we murdered a guy and then we made pizza. Uh, yeah, sure. However, we manslaughtered. We manslaughtered. The guy. oven is is a huge mess. <laughs> you installed the oven. The oven is. Oh, wow, I'm so out of order. All right, the oven got uh paid for and installed. It's a huge mess. It doesn't work properly. They then used the oven to make another smaller oven, which, in fact, also burned out and is now a cookie sheet. Uh, Virgil's wife showed up uh, in order to ruin everything. He convinced her to stay. They then dug out a area underneath Evie's house, basically without her permission. They just scared her into it. 
unintentionally. She's very afraid of everything. Uh, so now there are several new rooms underneath Evie's house, which are all owned by Virgil's wife and not by Evie. And uh, and the Dwarven Kingdom uh, started in the year. What year is it? I don't know. <laughs> Tell me. Oh yeah, we made keep, a bunch of boat murder references. Listen, there's a lot of dead people now. There's a trail of bodies being involved. There's one dead body. Wow. I, okay, there's more than enough dead bodies. <laughs> one is too many. I will agree. Uh, let's see here. So let's talk about beliefs, instincts. What do we got for this week? Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Excellent. Anya, Anya, Anya. Well, your first belief is basically impossible, but why don't we just go ahead and talk about it? Well, I'm giving up on trying to be present myself as a friend or as, you know, someone great and reliable because apparently I'm trying to be swayed away from murderous tendencies, but when a mystery dwarf breaks into your house and you just try to disarm him and someone else kills him, you're, you know, you're the victim. You're the, the, the baddie. So I believe I can show Evie that I am a decent, caring human being. I'll probably do that just by looking after the kids. And so I may not be great, but at least I can be decent. Good luck. Thanks. Uh, I believe we will have the most popular entry in the competition. I think that everyone's going to love it. This wonderful new idea. You know, first right, slice is free. And I can teach the children that there are better options than the street solution. Violence must not be the first response to a problem. And it's, and that's kind of my own goal as well from past weeks, trying to leave behind, behind that kind of being drawn into that mercenary stuff and try and leave it behind. And so violence is not the first response. It doesn't mean that violence is never a response it just means it's not the first response you changed your third trait i love what it says now i hadn't read it until just this moment which one your third oh trait. yeah the instincts yeah they'll always have bread on my person and always have a knife handy as tool or weapon those are still there because those instincts are just me but the third one this is great swiftly and effort <laughs> effortlessly disarm the children anytime they are holding anything that could be considered a weapon or get them in trouble so you know it's like oh look what i found no nope. it's before they even realize <laughs> grab it out of their hands throw it back and no 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 just nope so you know they're not even expecting it just it's just done 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 that that's important because they have sticky fingers and they're eager to incite violence. So the best way to curb that is to, anytime they're holding something they shouldn't be holding, just And you turn against the thumb because one thumb is weak and four fingers are strong. So you just go up and throw it away. Done. That's it for me. All right, who's next? I'll go next. Ellis, Evelyn Brooker. Who are you? Um, the only belief that I had that changed was I believe our pizza can feed the people. Anya made a very good argument and the kids talked about that too. Um, I still believe everyone is good on the inside and I still believe that Anya is violent and it'll change your ways eventually. Your instincts appear unchanged, but hilarious. Um, I still always run a hide and threaten, stop everything I'm doing to pet a dog that I see, and always treat children with kindness or give them sweets. Excellent. Virgil? Uh, I was working on change in like a cup full, um, <clears throat> but I still don't have a bunch of really good ones. I do like the new one. I owe Sarah and Thomas big time for taking out the trash. Um, and I have Evie has no notoriety. We need her to be the mouthpiece for the group at the competition. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, 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 ah. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you. How do you? Oh, so you're gonna convince her to uh, headline for you then? Okay. Uh, you might want to check Evie. Is that something you could be convinced to do? Maybe. Okay. Good. Excellent. 
That's exactly the answer I need to hear. Because if the answer is, <laughs> I, I already am, then there's no, I mean, the belief is not going to be challenged. And if the answer is no, same deal. Excellent. Uh, I believe you all have one week left. You've currently cleaned up a body and you've invented pizza. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do in that week? And I want to note, by the way, you all have put yourself in an interesting position where none of you have a belief about winning the competition. Your belief's about being the most popular and getting it out to the people. So I have a question. Is your plan here not to like become the Count's a new crew, but to use the competition as a way to be like, oh, look at us. We're the new crew on the ground. Uh, look at this za. Keep the za. You tell me what the plane is here. Yeah, maybe I'm actually, I might change. I don't expect to be treated well as humans to our pizza is going to make us rich and famous. Excellent. My belief used to be that we'll win the competition, I know. but I was, you said that since I was so Yo, sad so that we were going to sure. win, yeah, you're sure. that it doesn't have to be a belief anymore. All right, just... well, if you want to keep aiming for that shot, don't throw it away. So, uh, I think we'll, we'll pick up, unless you have a specific time and place you want to be, the next morning with Sarah and Thomas and Issa, is that right? Issa? Yep, Issa Stoneburner at uh at the house everybody's making breakfast and this is teaching the kids how to set the table dwarf style which involves juggling the plates and silverware before putting mm -hmm. them down uh but they are not skilled at it yet so she's just got them juggling the silverware what they drop on the right. ground and get right. dirty right. and then has them clean it and then has them juggle it again <clears throat> so i'm juggling plates and and setting setting those down yeah, you and Issa are probably like throwing plates to each other, rolling them across your shoulders. Yeah, on like the behind the style. back. And... Yeah, it's just a natural dwarven thing. All dwarves can do it. <laughs> not uh, weird. Yeah. Considered... I, I, I get nervous every time they're setting knives at the table. I'm like, oh, wait, no, it's just silverware. Okay. Yeah, but bouncing, not... bouncing knives off the roof, trick shots. I want to clap, cheer them on for their performance. I'll go back to making biscuits. American style biscuits for those who are wondering. Or oh, making oh, like biscuits biscuit. and gravy. Mm. Oh, biscuits and sausage gravy. So good. So good. Uh, yeah, and as we're like eating some sausage, I'm like, all right, well, question is, are we going to have one kind of pizza? Do we want a variety? For the competition? Yes, well, I think we might run into trouble if someone's like, oh, lamb sausage. Don't like lamb. And then, you know, we're in a spot of trouble. So I'm Duh. thinking we do lamb sausage on one and horse sausage on another. Solve the problem. Some people like horses a bit too much. Lamb sausage on one. Horse. Right, they love horses. That's why I should definitely. No, but on they there. love horses when they're alive, not when they're dead. Humans are oh, that's, weird. That is disgusting. You eat live horses? So you Monsters. Eat, <laughs> you don't eat them. At, well, certain northern people they really enjoy them, but uh, while least, you're saying this, Sarah and Thomas are looking at each other like very strangely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Children, do you have to do you do you have an opinion on on toppings? Uh, Thomas is about to say something when Sarah slaps him in the chest, and the knife she was supposed to catch hits the ground and does that thing that knives do, where they're like, brruh, 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 brruh. and she's like, "When you're on the street, sometimes you have to eat whatever's available." Thomas just like shrugs. Yes, but you're not on the street anymore, so you don't have to worry about that. Evie, your beautiful floors now have numerous scuff marks from <gasps> kids running around. They have new shoes, but also these knives have just been, like, d destroying your floor. Well, your whole kitchen is full of, like, detritus and crumbs 
and cooking material. No one has been respecting your method. Well, that sucks. <laughs> I don't know if you wanted to do something about it. I'm going to start cleaning up my kitchen. You're going to start cleaning? <laughs> Uh, um i let's see i know what i'm gonna do all right well thing is we're gonna blow the competition out of the water we're gonna need the best ingredients we can find and all i know is no one's gonna have as good a mushrooms as i can find underneath the earth yes i'm thinking wow. take the little ones they got be best vision and they're closer to the ground as well and we run them through some caves for a while, see what we can find. Yes, yes, yes. Um, that some fun, kids? Uh, Sarah agrees, and Thomas is like, I'd rather stay here and keep training. But Train. what if, they, what training if there's... What what if there's... Oh, no, Thomas Thomas wants to train with you, Anya. For uh, no, we haven't. Have we won the competition yet? You want he's he's just like please master you have to teach me how to defend myself uh i'm just like but thomas what if there's trouble when we're out picking mushrooms you'll need to protect your sister won't you he's torn and you can tell he's gonna make another dwarf honor thing he's gonna he's gonna say something about dwarf honor if no one interrupts uh uh um let's see uh, yeah i'm gonna be like i'll show you how to make a dwarf and sling how about it he agrees to go. <laughs> oh, and then he starts God. asking a half hundred questions. He's just like, Dwarven Sling, is that like magical? Can you imbue stones with great power? How fast does it fire? Can you kill a man with it? What about a horse? Uh, yeah, I like tell him a story of, uh, of uh, Agar. Let me tell you about Agar, the dwarf slew of Colossus with a exploding rune carved stone slung from it is his mighty mighty sling <laughs> a yard in length it was and and made from the hide of a bison etc um and then i give him like a little rope with a small patch of leather <laughs> your wife is looking at you like don't go telling them stories that they <laughs> Don't go telling them stories that aren't true. Like all oh, the legends, some of them are true. Some Agar of them are was tales. a drunken layabout who got his head chopped off by a human barmaiden. Look, a human barmaiden. She was like seven feet tall. <laughs> you know, my great 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 grandmother was uh, a barmaiden and. They said she was quite tall, but nah, can't be her. Can't be her. No. Uh, dwarven, dwarven measurement uh, is about two feet more when added on when measuring humans, ah, so it's a little okay. shorter than that. We've already established that their number system changes depending on what the previous number was. <laughs> how, how tall do you think I am? I've got to be at least six and a half feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> Seems reasonable. That's to work in Which comes directly after four and three quarters. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Ah, I understand now. Dwarves measure the same way J.K. Rowling does. Excellent. Uh, perfect. Perfect. You guys know. You guys know how uh, Harry Potter gets down hills. Oh boy. Walking, J.K. Rowling. <laughs> <laughs> no, <it's so> <sighs> All right. Uh, yeah. Rune, are you off with the kids? Yeah. So I go to you know we are we're gonna have to go outside of town a bit to find some uh, some some caverns or just little you know dark divots. Uh, yeah, and I'm going ahead and telling them uh, what kind of mushrooms we need to look for, uh, different tests you can do on the mushrooms to identify them. Excellent. That kind of thing. 
Well, it turns out there's a skill for this, uh, and unsurprisingly, you don't have it. <clears throat> Can you add a new skill to your being learned? Mm -hmm. It's called foraging, and it's a perception type skill. Uh, the difficulty to feed yourself near civilization is an ob three. Alrighty then. So it's going to be extremely difficult to nearly impossible. Wait, what? Uh, well, I have five dice. Um, you need six successes. And I have. You have a persona. Four fate and. Come on, sixes. You just need Give all those. You need a you need a six like you did last week, where you had like four of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, wait. You said three, three. and it'll be. It'll yeah. double itself. No. Impressive, but no. All right. Uh, as you're wandering around, uh, what you want to have happen, which is to find the mushrooms, doesn't. And instead, after a time, Thomas is like. Okay, we need to talk. All right. I what know is it, Thomas? dwarf honor is a thing. Okay? Of course, but very honorable people. We dealt with your dwarf friend for you. I need you to make us weapons. What kind of weapons do you like? A short sword for each of us, me and Sarah. All right, well. If we're going to keep doing this kind of stuff for you, you know. What Evie clearly isn't ready to do. If we're going to be the muscle for this gang, then we need weapons. Okay, so what I do is I like look around for some like clay, clayy mud, right? And I like get them to like grab onto it so I can get like perfect handles molded. Yeah. molded. Yeah. Uh, Sarah looks impressed that Thomas's play here worked. He's like, oh, hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, how old are you kids now? Thomas is about to open his mouth when Sarah slaps him on the chest again. She's like, old enough. Uh, do I, what I guess they were like, they're like 10. Well, 10. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm like, look, I don't know much about humans, but I think. You'd be about 50 for a dwarf. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. You can have a short sword. Thomas is like, yes. You'll be you'll be dead in like in like 80 years anyway, right? Like Thomas is like more like 50 to 60. <laughs> oh. Um so the other let's see, what else can we get accomplished out here? Um, it's writing down all the much. O's that you're making and not fulfilling. Uh, I'm gonna have to like go rob like the local smith. Yeah, I mean you've got a dagger and two swords to make. You have a silver dagger to use as a base. Pawn it off as then you only have to make two swords and they don't even have to be good because they're kids. What do they know? What do they know? Uh, well, even if I just like slap something together, it'll be better than anything they could get here. <laughs> there we go. There's that dwarven racism. <laughs> Laid it on thick. You literally just hit the bar of iron with your hammer one time, and this beautiful gleaming yeah. Excalibur comes out. You're like, looks like shite. Like. And There's I'm like, sword. every single human is a dirty racist. <laughs> uh, all right. The irony was not lost on him that day. Uh, yeah, and then then we'll head back. Um, okay. Uh, see, so I have. Let me just look at my character sheet again. I want to see you. Why. Where's my like stuff? Uh, so I think I have like a some kind of workshop that came with my stuff. Right? Yeah, you have a workshop. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, great. So then I'm going to get started first of all on the short sword. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to do, uh, you know, the custom handles. And I'll probably just do those out of wood and then like wrap them in a thin wire. I feel like this is going to take some time. OK, yeah, I mean, a couple yeah. days to make. A yeah, yeah. Swords. let's let's cut to the other team real quick, just in case they have anything they want to do before you burn up the rest of the week making sword handles and baskets and all that good stuff. <clears throat> Uh, Anya, Evie, what's going on with you now that uh, the kitchen is slowly becoming cleaner? The floors, however, will be eternally marked by knives. Knives. I'm I sure think. that once once the competition's over, the glory of victory will 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 allow us to convince someone to come in and redo all your floors. They'll be wonderful, Evie. They'll be fantastic again. Don't you worry. And uh, the rest of us can then move out of your house and uh, have our own places to live. And you can have everything back to normal. And uh, I don't know, you'll also have a dwarven kingdom underneath. But that. Look, we can make a secondary entrance to the dwarven kingdom. <laughs> we won't be tracking mud in and out that way. Yeah, we'll, we'll appreciate that. We really will. Yeah, I asked you. Um, <laughs> But uh, we are we what what should we put what what topping ideas do you have I mean I, I I will make different varieties of dough we can make it thicker we can make it thinner but but you you're the one who knows what's gonna taste best on top of this pizza so well, what what should we do Well before you start the mushrooms aren't coming through the only mushrooms grown around here are the field mushrooms grown out of piles of shit tastes like nothing but a rubber. Mushrooms taste like rubber. I, I mean, if you can't get a good 10, 20 meters underground to get at the good flavorful dirt growing mushrooms, it's not worth your time. Maybe maybe you could take the children to find one of those pigs that sniff them out. I hear that happens. But then you have to like fight the pig in order to get the, the right mushroom or this, I don't remember what they're called. But, but yeah, they find them and then they want to eat them. So then you wrestle it which sounds exciting. The children can get in some of their combat practice by wrestling the pig away while you then pluck whatever. Are we talking the... about truffles? <gasps> Tru yeah, I, the char my character just Okay, all right. I was just confused because I was like, is this truffles? Uh, yes, it's truffles. truffles. But, 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 but Anya doesn't know what a truffle is because she's baking. She's not only had two in cooking. She doesn't know what they're called. Why are the kids getting combat practice? Uh, because they uh, have this is of... this is a dangerous area, obviously. We've... Well, they have lots of energy as well. Helps you know, <laughs> the only time it got dangerous is when y'all moved into my house. Before it was just sunshine and rainbows, just me and my garden. Nothing bad ever happened. Well, can you be having a breakdown right now? Yes. Can it's... you make a steel <laughs> test for me? <laughs> oh dear. Uh, the difficulty. I'm just is gonna you, say I fail. It, yeah, it's a six. Is it difficulty? I fail. I already know that. I mean, you get to roll to get your test. Yeah, yeah. The base obstacle is six. Yep. Well. Wow. Wow. Oh wow. Oh, I can re-roll wow. one of those. Uh, no, it automatically re-rolled. Oh, did it? Yeah, steel's open ended, so it automatically rerolls uh, sixes. I mean, okay. three on two dice is pretty dang good. Unfortunately, mark a challenging test. And for three heartbeats, you're trying to like be mad at people, and you're just like, everyone in the room can see you're having a personal breakdown. You're like shaking, your skin is like becoming flustered and blushing. Uh, and then the words start pouring out after that like hesitation period. Thomas and Sarah are just like looking at each other, like, what is happening? Children, go downstairs, uh, please. Uh, look, 
you don't need to be worried. I mean, soon the, the, the kids will be a little bit older and a little bit taller. They'll be uh, perfectly trained, fully armed guards. Don't yeah. come near the place. You killed a man in my house. I thought right he was there. going to kill me. Like three feet from where I sleep. I like, I, I'm like, uh, like looking for to like the spot where he died. Um, and I'm like, we could replace that floorboard right there if, if, if you want, and maybe a piece of that wall. I'm going to make some tea. Would you Look, like? I'm to still it? fairly certain the place isn't haunted. Do you, you, do you see what you guys did to my house? Well, the extension isn't finished yet. I mean, there's obviously work that needs to be done where the transition from your house to the underground cavern isn't very clean. Why is there an underground cavern in my house? Well, we wouldn't want to be staying upstairs. That's ridiculous. Not What's wrong room. with upstairs? Why are you staying here? Nobody asked. Where, where else am I going to stay? Got to work on the oven every day, work on uh, recipes. Look at my floor. Look at my kitchen. Oh, no, it's beautiful. Uh, everyone's bustling and cooking. You bet I... that pot that you used to kill that guy with. It's never going to get undented. We can buy a new pot. That's... Look, I can't afford the new pot, actually, but... We're going to win a competition, and then we'll be able to take care of all of these things. Exactly. Uh, tea, I pass over a cup of tea to Evie. Nice, hot, steaming tea. Look, just think about it. After the competition, me and my family will set up wherever we need to. We'll start building ovens for rich people. We'll be selling pizza on the side. You'll have your, your lovely rooms to yourself with plenty of storage for grains and anything else you need to cook with underneath your, your house. Just, you're going to feel so good standing up in front of hundreds of people and telling them all about our, our oven and our cooking procedures and our lovely ingredients. And everyone will cheer for you when they taste our delicious pizza. Why It'll am I be worth standing it. up in front of hundreds of people? Well, well you're, they're you're, human. You're, you're not a dwarf, I mean... I'd just be standing underneath hundreds of people. It's not going to be very impressive. <laughs> well, they they know you. They love you. You're Chef Evelyn, the singing chef. That's that's a right. I was thinking maybe like we do a little jingle at the beginning. We could come in for like a chorus type thing. Uh, I can play Rude a hand drum. Rude can be dressed. Just uh, dressed up like a jester. He can tumble around, juggle some plates. I thought we were just entering a cooking competition. Why are we? Look, well, it's for nobles. It's they expect a bit of a show. Noble people, you know, always want something grand. It's not just about the food. It's about the presentation. It's. About I thought you hated nobles. Uh, we're talking about like killing one when we first met. Look, oh. what if we get in there and someone's got a dog that can crack eggs into a bowl? Have you thought about that? We're not going to be very impressive lined up against a cute little doggy helping to cook. Well, that's okay. We can pet the dog. I think we that... could win fairly easily if a dog was cooking because there'd be dog hair all over the food. Ooh. Good point. Good Look, point. We, need to have, we need to have gimmicks to catch the eye and food to catch the taste buds. All right? And I'm no, no eye grabber, but you've got the name and the lovely, lovely voice to serenade all those into loving our pizza more than anything else. I feel like you're changing the subject from destroying my house to the competition. Right, it's all in line to a goal. The competition solves all our problems, including your, your housing facility problems. Essentially, we're going to go a win, and then we all leave your house. Look, we're going to oh. be winners, okay? Winners, finally, with all the recognition and approval we deserve. Now, look here. 
ignore the competition for about five minutes. I invite you guys, I let you guys stay in my house. You trashed my kitchen, broke down a wall and trampled my garden. You are going to apologize and you are going to start respecting my house. All right, I'm sorry, um, especially the dead guy that was like really kind of got out of hand very fast. Um, and it's not, it's not very good. I understand the wall was well liked and maybe the dwarven carvings were appropriate. So I apologize that that wasn't run through a committee or anything before we went ahead on that. Uh, a little bit of overstepping on the bounds. Apology, apology for that. Um, also what with the uh, consumption of all your goods and, uh, and denting of the pot. Uh, Perhaps I could heat it up a bit and give it a couple of hammers. I'm not going to use that pot again. You've got blood on it. You can just keep the pot. I'll give it to Thomas. He can use it as a helmet. Oh, excellent idea. Um, make sure that you get a, the proper suspension and, and the, the, uh, never mind. We'll and why that. are we teaching orphans combat? Shouldn't we be taking care of them? But Maybe I, teaching them like a skill that they can go and get a job with, like farming or cooking Sarah's or just foraging. Like, we could take care of ourselves. We have for a while. We're here because I we need said, to work. I said that you should go downstairs for a little while. Here, oh, that's here. right. Have you some, did. You sound. did say that they did go down. Sorry, I cut yes. it there. All I right. even said, please. I chased them away. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, that's true. Look, I don't want them to learn that, but. I'm trying. I am desperately trying with them. And every time I try to teach them the right lesson, they just go around. They want to press their limits. This is just my way of we getting them, trying to promise them things to wait until the end. I don't want them to become violent, mass murdering orphans, but they have no parents and they need something to keep them here. If we didn't have that little... I thought we were going to pay them. So that, Issa is lurking in here. Issa's lurking in the darkness and gives you a look, Evie, while Anya is describing how the orphans are. She's like looking to you and then looking at Anya and then looking at you and looking at Anya. What? What? Um, Issa, come on out. Come on. Come here. You're going to be part oh, of the Oh, no, dear. I'm fine right where I am. It's nice Well, and you're looking and staring. Quite impolite, I must add. Look, look if, if we don't have something that these kids are interested in That's and that they're, yes. that they're behind, they're just going to leave. And that's no help for them. And that's no help for us. So okay, First of all, we're not teaching them mass murder. Let's just let's draw the line right we're there. We're not teaching them that. But if they learn how to wrestle... That's not mass murder. And there's nothing. I mean, some people compete professionally wrestling pig, grease pigs for money. That's a perfectly, well, perfectly detestable trade, but it's a, still a trade. Are you uh, sure that's their only interest? No, well, they keep taught. Well, they're on the street. They have lived a life where they've had to steal and fight. And those are their instincts. It's going to take a lot to change them. I'm trying to change. And they're trying to change, but can you change a dwarf's beard? Can you snap your fingers and dwarves don't have beards anymore? No. I mean, you could shave it if you wanted to, I guess. And it would grow back. It's the dwarf's nature to have a beard. Uh, you can braid it. You can tame it. You can brush it. You can comb it. You could do all sorts of things. Also, if you, you cut it and you don't burn the hair, the hair is haunted. <laughs> <laughs> What's interesting is your, yes. your your discussion about dwarven beard hair is true because they have the trait bearded. Mm. Uh, it's not even racist. It's totally true. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not even going to read the chat right now. Oh, um, oh yeah. Chat's losing it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I continue trying to like soothe, soothe Evie. I'm like, uh, I'm like, the kids aren't going to learn. They just don't know yet. You know, they're they're young and they're impressionable and all their impressions have been made in the wrong place. Like here, when you no, have no, the of a body. That, that was actually their idea. That, you, that doesn't make it any better. But can you go back and change that? No. 
Do we have wizards who can transverse time? And Maybe. Space? I don't know how magic works. Well, neither do I. We don't have access to that. All we can do is move forward, win this competition, create the most amazing thing that everyone will create every single day. And then that gets all of us out of your home. So Issa stands up at this point and interrupts you rather rudely and says, I know of a wizard who can reverse time. I don't think we can afford... Uh, I don't if think you are willing to pay the price, you could turn time back to the day before the murder. Uh, no, 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 no. We don't have the, those kind of resources. We don't have the coin for that. No, 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 no. We had just have to focus on the competition. We win the competition, and then we can start putting all the pieces back together. Then floors can get repaired. Walls can be replaced. Children can... Be replaced. Or, I mean, no, uh, educated. <laughs> educated. You can't replace them. Look, it's you can a... replace their bad ideas with better ideas, though. This oh, is swats you. Yes. Uh, look, I don't think that... We don't need as... to be educating these human children. Uh, What's the point? Well, I, I don't think them running around uh, are doing doing business here and there. They need to be able to By the to time they learn themselves. anything, they'll be falling over dead. Right, they've, they've got to have at least uh, 7,000 good labor hours in them before they drop. Yeah, that, that's, that's they enough. They can make to... a tunnel. That's about it. That's one less tunnel you'd have to dig. That, that's great. That's fantastic. Let them try. Fine, whatever. Human, humans, it, I mean, we, what, what we lack in longevity, we make up for in... But I thought you this? were going to change your ways and not be about... hanging out with all these young women, but here you are adopting human children. And you know who's going to have to take care of them? Me. No, they're going to need their diapers changed. They're going to need no, men. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure they do each other's diapers. I'm fairly right sure they they do no. each other's diapers because I never no. see either of these doing the diapers. They don't use diapers anymore. Uh, they're human, potty trained. Yes, human children after about um, three years uh, generally can tend to that on their own. They don't need diapers. That's one thing humans are very fast at learning. Oh, yeah, I've always said they are good at just about all shite. Um, ah! It's a it's a laugh. It's a common dwarven joke. Um, look, I do not disagree with you, Evie. I think what's important is showing the kids how to do the critical thinking and thinking on their own. And if you take the steps to make sure that they're armed with the correct ammunition to think for themselves and think things through. That's the best way to protect them, really. All right. So, Just continue sweeping up my messy kitchen. Yeah, there, there's like, as you get around the other side, there's probably just more mess has accumulated back to <laughs> the 12 o'clock position. Uh, yeah, and I'm just like, uh, look, you worry about making sure those kids grow up to be good kids. I'll make sure they don't grow up to be dead kids. When I sweep the floor, I expect it to stay clean. Uh, yeah, I like, uh, <laughs> I like carefully like take my boots off. You can see they just have tons of dirt like, like on the bottom of them. And the I go outside to like knock them. Knock the dirt Rocks off. fall off for some reason. Yeah. yeah. I will. Um, I will go and talk to the children, and uh, we will. We will set some very strict rules for the remainder of our time. Very strict rules. <laughs> yes, very strict rules. Uh, when I talk to the children, it's going to be very different. But we'll, we'll get to that. I will talk to them in their room privately. Yep. I just keep trying to get my kitchen semi-normal again. All right, let's cut to Star Wars cut to the kids' rooms where they're laying on their stone beds. They've got like a blanket, a second blanket, and a pillow. Uh, and that's basically all that they've got. And they're excitedly talking about these 
cool new weapons that they're about to get. Uh, they're talking in street code as well. They're like, yeah, we're gonna slice these pigs up real nice. I don't know street language. Anyway, they're basically using the medieval version of Ebonics and uh, Cockney. Yeah, I'm not even going to attempt. It's been too long since I've studied it. <laughs> uh, um, wait. On their door. Yeah. Lightly knocking. Uh, I mean, lightly knocking on the door causes the door to swing open. Uh, oh. That dwarven engineering. Shweep. Uh, the hinges Silent are like, like nice. water. Yes. Uh, Thomas Im mm. immediately sits up and is like, oh, Master. Are we going for training today? Um, uh, we will do some training today. We will do some talking as well. Part of training is listening to instructions. And I know that sounds boring, but it's very important. So let's have a sit. And then we're going to get out of the house and we're going to give Evie her space for a little while. I think she needs it until the competition happens. I think it's very important that we do our best to keep things clean not make crumbs she's she's let us live here and her whole life has been turned upside down she's a little upset but she's our friend so we don't want her to be upset do we sarah cuts in and is just like that's as if she's never had to do any hard work in her entire life she works very hard cooking for other people but she likes seeing the happiness yeah, but she's good at it Yes, that's because when she you was think young, she'd never seen a dead body before. She probably hasn't. Not everyone has. Sarah's just like losing it. You get the idea that she thinks that that Evie is weak. No. And and in street language that's not good. <clears throat> I'm gonna sit next to her, put my hand on hers, wrap the <laughs> fingers around where her fleshy part of her thumb is. Not squeeze or anything, just hold gently for now, okay? You, you want to break your thumbs? <laughs> <laughs> you underestimate her, and I pat her on the back of the hand with my other hands. Like, your life wasn't fun before this. My life wasn't fun before this. Does it mean that we all have to be the same? Do you really want to go and live on the street and always have to fight for everything? And Or would you like to you know, not have to worry about where your next meal comes from? Would you like to have the skills to know that if someone did push you around, you wouldn't have to worry? Do I fight? Do I flee? You would be able to handle yourself. These things. Sarah's like, just like, I have those skills, lady. Oh, well, I have a thought, Thomas then. is just like, I'll learn. I'll learn, master. Teach me. <laughs> Thomas, your sister here thinks she knows everything. Does she? He looks at her. I put a game. finger over Sarah's mouth. Does she? she Remember, if I'm the master, her, to be honest. She uses her other hand to slap him in the chest for the third time today. She's like, bam! He's like, uh, she's pretty smart, I guess. She knows how to do stuff. She's a bully, isn't she? He's just like, what? No. No. Yes. No. He's got a constant purple bruise right <laughs> around here. <laughs> I, I, I gently... Gently just squeeze a little bit lovingly and tenderly on, on Sarah's hand and say, no, uh, this has to stop. You're supposed to be family. You're supposed to look out for one another, not hit one another. She looks at you like, you have no idea what you're talking about. She's like, that is how I show. I have That's how I show love, lady. How many, how many people have you killed in your life, Sarah? Tell me. Tell me all about them. She How starts like them? counting on her fingers. She, I, I wanted her to just get like the the infinity stare. <laughs> it's clear that the number is more than five. The number is more than five. Yeah. Well, do you regret any of that? I killed Tell them me. because they were in. Because the what? They were trying to come at me or Thomas, trying to take advantage of us. And do you ever think that one day that's what's going to get you killed? I mean, if I don't defend myself, I'm definitely going to be dead. Sometimes. Listen, lady, you don't know what it's like on the street. 
not everyone grew up in a mercenary company or whatever it is. No, I've like heard me. about all of your friends so far. The guy with the limp, the guy at the wheelbarrow place. You've I got friends. You know people. Friends who are missing body parts. Friends who are long dead. Friends who have suffered. Do you really friends want friends who have swords? I don't got friends with swords. I have me and my brother. I squeeze. Thomas, we will go and have brawling practice. Sarah, you will stay here and you will clean. You will not be practicing with us. Your attitude <laughs> is not that worth uh, learning. So, Thomas, come on, gather your stuff. Let's go and have some training. We'll get out of the way. Sarah, please help, uh, help Chef Evelyn uh, tidy up everything. Do your best. I want to hear good things about it. Otherwise, no swords. I'm curious. It feels like either an intimidation or a persuasion here. Uh, it feels a, to me like to Sarah persuade. has a no rugrats tat. Yeah, somewhere. something like that for sure. Yeah. No rugrats? What? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I need you to make a persuasion roll. I'm going to okay. give you a bonus die to this. You have an advantage die. The okay, difficulty so. is two. That's their combined average will. Modifier one, arc to zero, base obstacle two. Oh, oh, horrible. Boy. Oh, boy. There's a six there. Oh, yes. All okay. right. I mean, you have to roll two more sixes and then another success. You can do but... it. I believe in you. Okay. So it's slash roll one D6, D6 exclamation. exclamation Oh, no. get three more. No, nope. no. Nope. 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 <laughs> all right. Mark down that you have another check on your persuasion. I don't expect you to get all seven checks by the end of the day, but uh, I can try. You need, yeah. you need five more. Uh, <laughs> not going to happen. Not going to happen. <clears throat> so I just stand up and say, you don't know what you want from your life. Obviously that's fine. Thomas. Thomas comes with you, but Sarah bails out. She's just like, you're not my mom. I don't need this crap. Uh, it, she slaps Thomas on the chest again, and she's just like, if you love her so much, why don't you marry her, Thomas? And then she stalks out. <clears throat> Thomas, Thomas starts crying at the horrific insult. <laughs> <laughs> Gee! Thomas is prepared. Fault. Thomas is prepared. Thomas, Thomas wants to fight. Thomas, your sister is a bully. Do you know that? Uh, you are spotlighting him here, and he's afraid to answer. She's not here. You can speak for I mean, he's you still, want. like, looking around, like, I'm not going to answer this. I'm not going to answer this. I'm not going to answer this. This uh, like, he's he recognizes that no matter what happens, this answer is bad for him. Okay. Well, we go get back up to the kitchen. Is Sarah around anywhere, or has she left? Is I mean, you do not see Sarah anymore. Okay. Has Sarah come by? She's in quite the mood. Did, did I see her go by? You leave? I mean, you might have seen her heading down the road towards the city. There was like uh, a thundercloud over her head. Lightning was striking everywhere. Yeah. Rocks were starting to raise up because her power level Ooh. was going up. I, I want to try... And I'm sure this is something that I'll have to either not be able to do at all or learn. I want to try to follow her without her seeing me. Ah, excellent. There's a skill for that. It's called inconspicuous. <laughs> uh, I, so, yeah, that's, that's what my character wants to do. I'm sure it's mechanically impossible. But uh, we'll do it anyways. <laughs> Let me You're check. short. She's not going to notice. Let me check what inconspicuous She's short, too. It's, it's like oh. eye level here. Uh, I mean, she's probably actually a little higher than I level, honestly. You're going to have a penalty to this, certainly, because you're a dwarf. And you're going to stand out pretty bad. The only dwarf. Uh, inconspicuous that is sense. tested against observation. So, <laughs> character is above or below station. Character is not from this region. <laughs> oh, God. She's character starting to is get... of a different race. He's trying to blend in with. Okay. All right. Uh... I mean, it's fine. What, whatever. What? What is my one, uh, two, three, four, five? Agility. Okay. Uh, it is will. Fine. Uh, your difficulty. 
This ten? is a, your difficulty to start out with is three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, All right, so this is gonna be 16. a difficulty sixteen test. Okay. Um, so I have four dice. All I need is four times that amount all of successes. All you need is for all four of those to be sixes, and then for that to happen four more, three more times. <laughs> Just need a wave of sixes over and over again. I believe in the dice. I mean, I believe in the dice. The dice are going to fail him. Uh he would have to have uh, multiple runs of Shadowrun luck in order to do this. Uh, base obstacle was... Wait, what was it? Eight. Eight? Okay. Okay, two sixes. Uh Oh my god, you do have two sixes. <laughs> Come on, Three man. Three out of four successes with two sixes versus 16. So 1d6 exclamation? 2d6 exclamation, actually, because you have two sixes. Wow, another, another, six. another six. All right, you got up to five out of 16. Uh, oh, no, oh. the six already rolled. That's why oh, I did it. Dice. Okay, okay. Yep. Oh. It'll okay. keep rolling infinitely. Uh, so make sure to put a fate point towards Will, and you get a challenging test towards Will uh, rather than on observation because your inconspicuous so was so ridiculously hard. You literally would, it'd be impossible. Uh, it was a stat test. Yeah, you you try following her stealthily for a while. Do I make? Do I wait? How many did I get? I got three, four, five. Five successes. Okay, so I make it like five feet. <laughs> you get into the city and you are basically immediately <laughs> recognized by everybody. Uh, and there's some kids in the dust. That's where she's going to. Is the dust district. And they're like following you, and they're like, "Hey, hey, Mister Dwarf Gov, what are you gonna like, put down the, the the rock? Yeah, you gonna stop snorting that, okay?" <sighs> you and you're like, Shh. and he's like, "You want to go, mate? You want to go?" She immediately turns around and makes you, and like goes around like, an alleyway. Uh, I I like uh, slap my forehead and and kind of jog off uh, to try to catch the her. The kid uh, continues chasing you and harassing you. He's like, "Hey." Hey, Mr. Dwarf, you won't go then. My dog said before you. I ain't got time you. for that. Yeah, oh, yeah, what? Well, you, you too old or something? Uh, I would like to stop and turn around and, uh, like, stare him down. You want to intimidate him? Mm hmm. You have intimidation? Oh, you do. You're learning it. Mm hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, good news is Will is two, so you have a fairly good chance of succeeding. Okay. By fairly good, uh, I mean nearly impossible, but... Modifier, zero. All right, that's zero. Base obstacle, what'd you say? Two, two, two. for learned skill. Yep. Two, two sixes, sixes. Oh, my God! You could wow. do this! You could do this! Holy oh, shit, one so more. close! Three, three, three and four. All right, mark down another test toward Intimidate and put another will towards... Uh, uh, Put another fate towards will. Holy shit. For one second, you like stare at him and it looks like he's about to back down. And that's when he whistles and two more kids step out of the alley behind you with like broken nail bats and a whistling <laughs> chain. Like they're, they've got something on the chain that's making it whistle. Shoo, a whistle. Shoo, shoo, shoo. And the kid's like, what you want to do now, dwarf? They've got a duck call on the end. Wank. Yeah. Wank. yeah exactly. <laughs> um, should we cut to the other? Uh, I mean, no, you're about to get beat up okay. by a bunch no, of kids. No, that's fine. I just thought we might want to like cliffhanger a scene, scene no, chase. No, 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 we're good right here. You're you're in a bad position, my friend. Uh, yeah. So so now I'm I'm obviously uh, you know what's happening already. I have an instinct for this. Do you have an instinct? I want to see. Run for cover. Run for cover. <laughs> You're gonna jog away. <laughs> ah! Okay. Uh, make a. So a... I'll probably like try to make it back to where there's like a store or somewhere, like back across, like through the, the the dust uh area, like back to where there's actual uh shops, not just like houses. All right. Let's make a speed test. Uh. Ba -ba -ba. 
They have speed three, but the first one is ha has two helpers, so he's got five dice. I don't know if you want to do anything to bump yourself up. Uh, no, it's okay. I believe in the heart of the cards. Uh, I have two successes. Four versus two is not bad. Not bad on your part, my friend. Oh my god. Nope. No. Nope. All right, so here's what happens. You go running through the dust district, and it's like being hunted by hound dogs. The first kid that you bothered is now chasing after you, and the other two have split up, and they, you catch flashes of them around the brick buildings. And occasionally when you try go to go to a side street, one of the kids pops up with a, with okay. a whip, and he's like, whee, 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 and you're like, ah! And you go so back. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like running. I have to like turn around and run back the other way, and then yeah. back the other way. Like look both ways for a new direction. There's like you get stuck one in kid, the other intersection, kid. And, and then I at... call out for Sarah. Okay, interesting, interesting. Um, let's see here. And I feel like this is a great time to cut away for a cliffhanger. <laughs> Specifically because I want to know what Anya's doing, especially if she goes into the city. All right, you and uh, you and your young apprentice, your Padawan learner Thomas, are back in the house mm -hmm. minutes ago. What's yeah. what's the plan? The plan is to say, Evie, uh, we're going to. It, we understand, you know, we've been imposing on you. We're going to go for a walk. Maybe we'll pick some wild flowers and herbs, or find something out there. Um, we'll leave you be for a bit. We things can be settled and returned to normal for a little while, and uh, we'll be back. Don't worry, before the sun sets, and we'll continue working then on different pizza doughs and ingredients and things. Issa sits up in the corner, and she says, "The thing she's worried about is if you do come back, you dolt." Well, we have to work together and win the competition. After that, then we can pack up and move on for good. But I think that you realize when you win the competition, you're going to be working for that Viscount. Yeah, for life. And, then I, and I won't have to live here. Oh, I oh, I see now. See? So this isn't like a family business thing, then. We're a partner. I thought you were related or something, like sisters. No, I know we look, uh, and you know, all humans look like, but yeah, um, yeah, no, 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 I'm actually quite new. I've only been here for three weeks now in this city. I'm uh, from a, a little further up north. <laughs> it's just like yep. three weeks, three years, it's all pretty new. Yes, exactly. So, no, we win. We'll have jobs for the Viscount. We will have our life paths. We'll still probably see each other quite often, but I. You know, Thomas and I can be apprenticed out of uh, his manor house or the keep or whatever he chooses to have us. And we'll be happy to bake and do as needed. To. That's finding our own place in the world. That's, that's, that's my goal. Anya, I didn't care that you lived here. I cared that you guys disrespected my house. Now do not walk across the floor. I just mopped it. Find a different way outside. <laughs> Me, I open a window and I help. <laughs> Thomas, lesson that, Thomas, I think we're going to practice some climbing now. Um, climbing trees is always fun for kids, but we'll climb out a window first. You go ahead. And then I will stumble out after him. Yeah, Thomas, Thomas, like combat rolls out the window. You can tell he's probably broken out of a few windows in his time. Mm -hmm. I will follow. All right. Thomas is just like, where are we going? Uh, we are finding we're, uh, we're going to we're going to learn two things today. Thomas, but uh, let's get some distance from the, from the house. So we walk a little while, just I whistle a bit and I hand him a little. Uh, today I have some walnut biscuits. They're they're quite crunchy and tasty. And uh, I say, well, we'll get some distance away. Uh, that's enough. I say, well, we're going to practice some unarmed stuff, some brawling. We're going to, I want to really see where you are already. This is a good start to test your skills, but we're also going to talk because um, you know that just Pulling out a sword and hacking someone the, to pieces, that's really not a good idea for your first option. You know that, right? I mean, that's what gets you thrown into a cell. That's what gets you forgotten about, left to starve to death, freeze to death under some, some guardhouse or some keep. Are you sure? I'm positive. I've seen it. 
You know, I've been in the service of nobles, and I see when someone displeases them for the silliest thing, how they can turn on them. And if you go back to living in the dust, which I do not want you to do, what's it going to be about? But you don't have to live in the dust. I think that we have opportunity. So knowing how to defend yourself is very important. And as a second option... He's nodding. He's like, yep, yep. But as your first option, you should at least pause. Use a few words. If you can stare down your opponent and intimidate them, that's a better victory than butchering them and then having to run from the guards. Running isn't fun. Well, I mean, if you're exercising and in a race, maybe you win a prize. That, that could be fun. But... We'll practice, but I also want you to know that what we learn, the things that I teach you, the things that I learned the hard way, that wasn't my plan. I didn't want to learn how to fight with a knife or a sword. I didn't want to know how to brawl. Do you know that? So he looks at you, and he comes to a very different conclusion. He's like, so if I plan to learn these things, I could become better than you one day. Probably. I think All that's... Right. Quite. Teach me oh, to I... intimidate. And he immediately is like, Macho Manning is like, ah! <laughs> and I just stand, fold my arms, and I just, and then I hold out a hand and it's like, no. If you're all sound and fury, that doesn't work. You need some words. You need words. Did you know that? Your words are your strongest weapons that you have. I'm I'm sure he's better at swearing than you are. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and that's why. That's how you intimidate. You can threaten. You can convince. You can... This is what I'm I trying imag- to I imagine you have him, like, yelling at a puppy, and the puppy's like... <laughs> <laughs> and then I have him yell at a cat, and the cat is like... The cat is like, maybe like, I need to leave. Dick? Yeah, no, the cat just turns over. That's what my cats would do. Uh, but right, let me see here. What you're trying to do is an instruction test. You're trying to teach him. Yes. And I need to figure out how difficult this is. I have no idea because I'm not the best at any of the skills he wants to learn. But this is my way of keeping him out of trouble and having him yeah, help yeah. us. Learn. We're going to figure out if he uh, he actually learns it. Learning a new skill, learning from another uh mm-hmm. how how difficult of a test do you want to teach a routine a difficult or a challenging uh, i think i'm just trying to teach him something routine all right that's good because he needs you know routine tests in order to learn yes uh no 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 penalties. wait you said you, you're doing uh intimidation for the training right now yep. or brawling uh we haven't brawled yet i'm just trying to okay. I would prefer it to be persuasion, but he seems to be more interested in intimidation. I mean, I don't know. well, no matter what you're going to teach him, it's going to be an instructor ability. Yes. Uh, so you right. need to learn a new skill <laughs> called instruction. Jeez, this is not going to get to the competition. <sighs> I know, I know. I was just hoping that if she was doing brawling, we could have like a dodge uh, Dragon Ball Z abridged <laughs> scene where she's just beating the hell out of him and screaming dodge. <laughs> dodge! <laughs> Dodge! Bam. He's just like I need an adult. <laughs> I am an adult. <laughs> uh, the okay. good news is, it's only difficulty one. Okay. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Nice. Three successes. Every single die is success. This is 6-2. I'm going to leave it as is. Okay. All right. So while we go through a slow motion montage of you, like, doing impressive poses and, like, Mm -hmm. yelling at Thomas, we see him mirroring it back. And then it does a a ghostly fade from, like, Thomas pointing and yelling to one of the kids that was in the alleyway pointing and yelling (laughs) at our good friend Rune. Uh, And let's see. So one way or another... Sarah's going to show up. The question is, which side does she show up on? She's certainly hella pissed. Yeah, okay. So, uh, Sarah shows up on, uh, like, a second-story roof uh, at the edge of a crumbling brick, and she announces her presence by, like, when she puts her foot down, 
a brick falls and some dust falls after it. Uh, and everybody's head swivels toward her, and she's just like, "What do you want, Rune? Just People wanted are nothing to... but trouble. You're trying to take my brother from me. Just wanted to make sure you weren't leaving before you got what I owed you, Dwarf Honor. I cannot let you leave without taking your blade." So the three young uh, ruffians look towards. Sarah, and they're like, this one with you, then. And she looks at you, Rune, and she's like, you're going to get me my blade right now, then. Dwarf Honor. Hi. Dwarf Honor. So she nods to the three kids. She's like, yeah, he's with me. All right. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm just going to be like, all right, you're going to be safe here. Why well, go and get you something to keep yourself safe? Oh, no. I'm going with you, Rune. I've had enough of adults around here trying to treat me like I don't know anything. I well, want come my, with. I want my dwarf work steel. Um, that way everyone will know just how bad I am. Uh, all right. So then um, I'm going to bring her back. Uh, to the pizza forge all right evie you've been cleaning your house up when all of a sudden rune and sarah show up again i'm probably like carrying in some uh like leftover ingots and like plopping them down by like the pizza oven you stop right there take five I steps back and take your shoes off i just cleaned this floor I like, I like, I'm like, like holding a pan and shaking it at you as I'm saying I do this. the thing where you like, where you like go to exactly where you stepped before, <laughs> like back, backtrack out of the house. Uh, and then I'm, uh, all right, well, I'm going to be doing a little bit of smithing today. As we done with this oven, you got any bread in there? I like open up, pull open the, the front and like peek in. I'm sure me. there's biscuits. There's always oh, yes. biscuits. <laughs> Doesn't it take like nine seconds to cook food? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's very I think quick. I think it's fine. There's like biscuits on the table, but it would have mm. been cooked. There's just a, a bowl of, of biscuit batter ready in case you need to like yeah. throw one in there for a few seconds. Emergency like biscuits. <laughs> um, it's emergency biscuit batter right by the stove for the nine second biscuits. Nine second biscuits. Uh, all right, so yeah, I'm gonna like um, talk Sarah through all of the kind of things that I'm doing, but the way that I do it is every piece of information that I give her, first I tell her the wrong way that humans do it, and then I tell her the way that it should be done. Uh, That's a good way to do things. How the military does it. Some militaries. Interesting. Um, are you trying to teach her, or are you just like showing off your knowledge? Uh, What's your I'm intent here? I'm trying to endear her to me. Ah, so you're trying to persuade her to be on your side. Yeah. Interesting. I'm trying to figure out if smithing is a skill or if it's blacksmithing. Smithcraft. Uh, I have artificer. Uh, I think that that artificer is a wise. Oh right, right. Uh, so s skills carving. I don't know if you actually know how to make things. How to for a forge artifice is a skill which you don't have. Uh, oh shit, we should have been using that. What's forge artifice? A forge artifice lets you make forges. Oh well, you weren't making a forge. You don't know how to make dwarven. Um, so by that logic, this thing that you're about to make is not, or this oven that you have, <laughs> it's like an inadequate piece of equipment. Uh, it's for, not for, as good as it for is. swords. Yeah. 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 You're going to take a penalty on it. Uh, okay. Blacksmith, which you also don't have. You are trying to make a sword, right? 
A short sword they asked for. Yeah. All right, so two different tests here. Let's start with the persuasion. Your intent is to endear Sarah towards you. Uh, her will is two, so go ahead and make a difficulty two persuasion. Just all day, you're just throwing four dice versus an ob four. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, so it's being learned, so I just put two in. Yep. And I'll double it. Damn it. Oh, uh, well, there's a six. six. Going. He's going. Oh, my Bam. God. Holy Bam. shit. Holy shit. Nice. Okay. Mark another check towards persuasion and then put a fate towards Will. Uh, Yeah. Sarah is watching you uh get ready for this and she's like rolled her sleeves back and taken a pair of oven mitts so that she can be your like forging apprentice okay yeah so i'm having her like flip while i like hammer and then she like flips it again you know she's like the, she's the just like, master this is pretty scuzzing rad i'm like but so it is uh, you bet you had a your little friends never get to do cool shite like this when they're scumming around the dirt path. Yeah, she's Eating like, no, we course. don't. Look at the way it, it moves. You could really oh hurt somebody with that that liquid metal. I've never seen anything like it. I, and like, pull back my sleeve, and there's this huge scar on my arm. And I'm like, I it's the most painful thing I've ever felt. When you look in her eyes, you see something you've never seen in a human before. She's got the greed. She's got the oh. dwarf greed in her. I get like a little grin. <laughs> this is covetousness beyond the norm. She's like very possessive. And now that she's seen the way forging works, she's like, yeah, you could really hurt people with this. All right. Now you get to learn a new skill, blacksmithing. Uh, swords is ob4, and it is a... <laughs> Agility power, and you have a minus one die towards this. Uh, I'm sorry, the ob will go up by one because you have an inadequate workshop. Uh, so the difficulty is five. Okay, difficulty five. So I have five dice and I need ten successes. Yes, successes. What are you trying to make? A sword? Uh, yeah, I want to okay. make a, a, a you know a nice short sword i'm not going to be able to though okay modifiers so but i have uh, so it's agility uh, power so here we go yep same oh now it'll, it'll draw correctly Wait, ag agility oh okay it's there you ha if you click yeah. the little box it lets you select two okay so then i have one artha that just gives me another die right yeah you probably don't want to spend it on this I mean, what else am I going to spend it on? Uh, Probably making pizza or something. If you want to go all in on trying to make this sword, this is the time to do it. Oh, I only have two more. Well, you have fate. The thing is, Persona is the one that gives you an extra die, and you only have one of those. Right, yeah. You don't have to spend fate I'm still going to need... Fact, you can't. Right, I would still need to fate this out. Let's see. Yeah. What did I need? Ten? Yeah. And I'm, I'd be rolling six dice. I need to get four extra. Yeah, it's not very likely. Feeling lucky. Yeah, I Luck. want this really bad though. Okay, let's so I'm do gonna it. Say one Arthur. Yeah. Submit obstacle five. Submit. Do it. <sighs> wow, you got a six. You got one six. <sighs> you just need a shadow run this real quick. Give me the magic. Give me the magic. Yeah. All right. Uh, six successes versus obstacle ten. Not bad. I got five versus twelve earlier too, or whatever. That's true. I'm uh, not doing terror. I mean, you get to choose. Do you want to put your fate and your persona towards power or agility? Uh, probably power. All right, and take a challenging power test. Yeah, man. I'm sorry. It's a difficult, difficult power test. Uh, I think it's not gonna matter. <laughs> uh, what you draw back out is not functional. 
you you have a dripping molten piece of garbage like we're not even talking on the dwarf standards uh evie when he brings the sword out you see the little drizzle of metal hitting your floors and it catches on fire like fuck. uh it just continues i have my house. like i have my like dousing dousing bin you so i'm just like bucket. i'm just like having yeah i'm just like having uh sarah splash water on it so uh, like just quenching back this is a piece of garbage that you've created uh and you've ruined the steel in the process so uh, is the fire out just the fire's out checking. you okay. definitely got less than a thousand folds on that steel uh all that's right. right so that's, that's right, pretty Flutter. disappointing uh glorious thousand fold steel <laughs> that means absolutely nothing if oh never mind never mind that oh, the, Damascus steel right there. Get that purple iron. It looks pretty, it but if you have good quality iron, you don't need it. No one knows how to make Damascus steel. Well, they make something close. When I see him ruin my floor even more, I just flip my, my kitchen table and leave. All right, Issa follows you out. Uh, and I think that's where the scene heads to, is Issa following you wherever you're walking, Evie. Where are you going? <laughs> To my bedroom. All right, yeah. Issa follows you in there, and it just stands over you, and is like, "You seem the kind of lass that thinks that there's good in everyone, don't you?" Yes. That Anya. She's a sick pestilence upon humanity. She's a violent person. She's not a good man like like my husband. She's gonna twist those kids around and teach them violence and hatred. And not the good kind of violence and hatred, like fighting among your clan family. Or, you know, spitting on Dunbrocks. Fucking Dunbrocks. What are Dunbrocks? She spits on your floor. And then kind of, it's hey! just like, I'm sorry, it's a dwarven thing. Fucking Dunbrocks. It just mocks. I look defeated at this point. <laughs> Uh, and she's she continues to like worm her way into your mind as she's like, No, you can't trust Anya. She's a wild animal, little more than a beast with evil in her heart. She's using you to get the kind of life she wants. Why do you think that? Just look at what she's doing. You're all doing the same thing. What? I'm here for my husband. He just made himself at home and built an oven in, in my house. Yeah. Well, I, it's a dwarven thing. Anyway, listen. As soon as this competition's over, we'll be leaving, me and him. We'll go make a nice dwarf hole. I mean, not to insult your place here. Just not dwarf enough. There's only two depictions of elephants, and they're both downstairs. It's not human enough anymore, either. You'll have plenty of time after we're gone. Don't trust Anya. She's going to do what she can to sabotage you. I've seen it before a hundred times, Sutin. All she's done is work with me, actually. It's one saying all dwarves know. You can't trust a human. Then why are you trusting me? I'm not. I'm just trying to warn you not to trust other humans. But that's... That is Last, super racist. I, <laughs> she just... She <laughs> nods. She's like, I don't understand why you're all so untrustworthy. You don't know what an oath means. Girl, let's be clear here. I don't trust you. I still think you're trying to sex my husband. I don't understand what he's doing living with you girls, but... It's weird. Okay. First of all, I wouldn't sex your husband. I like guys that are taller than me. I can't reach the top shelf, so if somebody else could, it'd be great. Oh! <laughs> Makes sense. It's like, there are shelves over there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you point, she's, she just it does it. She's, she's just like... I thought that was decoration. No, there's stuff there. My gods. It's great for storage. I 
feel like we need to do a roll off. Okay. Let me uh, let me ask you something. Can she convince you that Anya is a bad person with full evil in her heart? Or anything along those lines? She can convince me that Anya is worse than I think she is. Okay. Uh, is there something you want to convince her of? That not all humans are untrustworthy. Excellent. Let's let's make persuasion checks then. And this is going to be a bloody versus test. Uh, unfortunately, you're still learning persuasion. <laughs> okay. Uh, she's got three dice, and she's calling in a fourth one for uh, humans are uh, human wise, probably untrustworthy wise, something like that. I feel is pretty worthwhile. <laughs> Uh, gee, okay, you got difficulty two, but you're only learning it. Yeah, okay. It's so difficulties, base obstacles too. Yep, yep, yep. You want to put a persona towards this? Oh my god! I got a oh six. Oh my god! There's a six. <laughs> Are you gonna fade it? I am definitely gonna fade it. <laughs> oh, holy shit! It's one to six exclamation point, right? This could happen. Yeah. Whoa! Five to four. <laughs> You okay? So if you just tied, there would have had to been a, a tiebreaker, but you destroyed it, and she's just like, yeah. "I, all right, I understand. I get the fee. I, I see the purity of your intent now. You don't want to have sex with my husband. I'll tell you no. what. I'll get moved out tonight, and I'll find some place for the two of us to stay. I'm sure we can find some sort of living quarters." You can stay here. I'm just asking you guys to respect my house while you do. All right. I'll go down to the market and find a book on human etiquette written in Dwarven. She's just, like, shaking her head like, it's going to be expensive. I was trying to unmute to be like, that's going to be an expensive book. <laughs> yeah, it's normally it's the just... only one that's ever been written. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 400 years old. <laughs> okay. it's very outdated. I'm it's sorry. Like, always carry a woman across the threshold of a doorway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Can I just like explain to her some like simple, you know, don't, yeah. don't break my stuff. Uh, clean up after yourself. Don't carve elephants into my walls, please. Oh, you don't like that. I like that the elephant looked fine, but they're a little bit graphic. They kind of scare me a bit. Oh, that's a dwarven thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very it's very nice for you dwarfs, don't get me wrong, but for me it's just I like I like my trees. Pats you on the head and flowers. she's just like you're so understanding for a human. You're only slightly racist. It's amazing. Well, I, I guess that's better than you thinking I'm totally racist. So She nods, like, yep, that's, yeah. All right. Da -da -na 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 -da -da. <laughs> All right, I think that it's time for our break, actually. Uh, And then we're going to have to figure out <laughs> what's happening next. Does anyone have any objections to jumping to the day of the competition? No, we can... <laughs> Take like right. one or two minutes to tidy up our day and then hand wave over. All of the pieces are in place now. All of the children have masters of craft. Who will win? Is it Manucci? Is it a third party? Everybody's like, oh, Manucci. Manucci. Obviously. We're going to roll our best and spend all our faith and do what we need to do. But... I spent I spent most of mine trying to to make twelve successes on a four <laughs> dice roll. Oh, uh, you got a lot though. I know it was, it actually felt really good getting so close. You learned Amazing. how not to make a sword. Excellent. We'll be back in about seven minutes for the second half of the final episode of Burning Bread. Stick around. <laughs> 